the NFC South heads east. It's the coach. This is week six of the NFL on EA Sports. Coming up, it's our second international game of the year, and it's a good one in the NFC South, as we'll see the Carolina Panthers take on the home team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll have a look at what's to come later at halftime, but first, let's get you to a couple of right fine chaps. It's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thank you. We are about 4,300 miles away from you there in Orlando as we come to you from the European home of the NFL, London, England. Coming up, another edition of the NFL International Series, and it should be a good one, between the Carolina Panthers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. They're off to a terrific start, unbeaten at 5-0 through the first month and change. And you can hang a lot of this early success on their defense, too. They're the tone setters for these guys, and the entire team feeds off of what they do. On the other side of the field for the visiting Panthers, they come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And they looked awfully good last week and came away with a two-touchdown victory. They did have a few reasons for concern defensively, but all in all, they'll take a repeat here if they could get it. Set to go now in week six of the NFL season, and we are underway on EA Sports. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And trotting out there, their tall quarterback standing at 6-5. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that and that's something he's gonna focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator said right off the top, he's got great footwork, love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And we get a glance now at the Buccaneer offense. Peyton Barber had his best year running the football in 2018, and he was ninth in the league last year in rushing attempts. The only issue, yards per carry. Total yards under 900. New head coach Bruce Arians, he believes he can improve his efficiency. He's got Evans. And they work this well upfield across the 45. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. First and 10, Daniels, he's going to rifle, it's caught inside the 25, and he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Back to throw, Daniels. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. James Bradbury, he was right there to break it up. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And they find themselves just outside the top 10 in the league against the pass, currently bringing up the number 11 spot. And the easy thought process is that stopping the run is the least of their problems because they're facing the number one passing team in the NFL. But if they don't stop the run as well, then that just opens up the passing game even more. They've got to do both. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. 
So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. And they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So on fourth down, on comes the Buccaneer kicker, Matt Gay. From the left hash, this from 39. Gay's kick is good. And the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they have three first downs and three points. This is taken at his four. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here are the Panthers now under head coach Ron Rivera. They'll be led out by their now 30-year-old quarterback, Cam Newton, MVP of the league back in 2015. And you and I both know that any win is a good win, and that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. To yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their own 22. Complete out to Samuel on the quick throw. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. A first carry for Christian McCaffrey, who made his first Pro Bowl last year. And the Buccaneer defense for the second straight play, flexing its muscle by forcing a loss. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels, because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, there's nothing but room to run. Third and long, it's Newton. And that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. Ellington now to return it. 21 yards, well done on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now, heading back out onto the field. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. From the gun, Daniels. He's got this one complete to Perriman. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That goes for a gain of 31. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. 
Operating from the gun, Daniels. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked up by James Bradbury. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of the game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of the game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. A look at the Buccaneers starters now on defense. They were very good last week in the win over the Saints. I don't know what the actual percentages are. I don't know the analytics on when you create five turnovers or takeaways in a game. But coaches have always told me, when you create a number that high, your chances of winning, probably up over 98%. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, here's Newton. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 10 there. Good enough for a Panther first down. D.J. Moore went through some ups and downs his rookie season, but really came on strong late in the year. Finished with 55 catches, the most among Panthers not named Christian McCaffrey. And now with Devin Funches gone to Indianapolis, he's going to be the true WR1 for the Panthers. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Okay, we gotta get this stop here. Now it's Newton. Thomas has got it, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. First down, this is McCaffrey. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. The numbers for McCaffrey last week. 18 carries, 83 yards. And he's hoping to have the same type of game, but he's going up against the number one defense in the league, and they're very good at fitting the run. So now you've got to think offensive strategy, maybe a little more play action, and try and find some people open downfield. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Newton to throw. Open man is Samuel. Complete. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this, but they need just a few inches here on third. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Call it a loss of six on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. So here are the Bucks to take over on offense. Remember, they're riding that five-game winning streak, and right now in the driver's seat in this ball game as well. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That's good for 28 yards.
So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. From the gun, Daniels. He finds his target. It's Evans. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Operating from the gun, Daniels. And his throw is incomplete. Mike Evans, the one he was looking for. But it'll be second down. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open. And it would have been an easy throw. And this is caught by Evans. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. First time into the red zone for the Buccaneers. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. Off the play fake, Daniels. And he's got his tight end, Howard. It's a Buccaneer touchdown. O.J. Howard, his second touchdown on the season as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed. Aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen, and it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and 12. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way, lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Here's McCaffrey. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but now yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. Throwing on third down, Newton. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. 
Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here's Ellington. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0, our score. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. He and Jonathan Coachman both like. Rashad Perriman off to the races. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rashad Perriman is set to down on the season as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. But that was well executed. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, long touchdown pass into the end zone. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And onto the field, here come the Panthers. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called it desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. Back to the air, Newton on second down. Incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, and it's third down. They've been playing sound fundamental defense thus far and able to keep this offense from creating a major dent on the scoreboard. Able to force the incompletion, but still waiting for that game-changing play. You feel like it's coming, the first sack, the first turnover. In a sense, they're playing old-school defense right now. The new-school defense is what you said, taking the ball away. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. That's taken on the 25. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's had one of those games that any quarterback loves, not only being able to complete some passes, but some deep passes. And it's pretty to watch. I mean, it's an absolute joy to see, but let's face it, we got to give a little bit of credit where it's deserved, right? Well, the protection's been great the protection, if that's where you're going. Yeah, protection's been phenomenal, but how about how it's been spotlighted, right? Our producer, Christian McLeod, our director, Kyle Burke, the rest of the crew, what they put together with these images and pictures, if you're an offensive lineman, that's what you're taking with you to contract time. <laughs> They're going to have a lot to take to contract time if this continues. Chris Godwin, the former Penn Stater, should see an increase in action and production in 2019 with Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson gone from the team. 842 yards in 2018, second only to Mike Evans on the Buccaneers. This quarterback now, 10 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. From the gun, Daniels. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. 
And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Back to back, good plays have them on the move on first down. Operating from the gun, Daniels. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Chris Godwin in the final seconds of the first half as the Buccaneers tack on to their lead. That is a near perfect end of half drive right there. And we've seen that many times from the best in the league. But do you really expect to see it done that well by a rookie? And how about the timing? Finishing it almost near the zeros, as you said, right at the end of the half. Great momentum to carry into the locker room. Gay is on for the point after. And the lead is now 24. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty as they come up on first and 10. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. All right, Brandon, thanks. A few teams starting to rise to the top as it's time to take you around the NFL here in week six. We'll start up at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. And as you see, they were winners back on Thursday night. Sony Michelle a touchdown run in the victory. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. As they say here in London, all to play for as we are back underway in the second half. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. And that first half, one to forget really on both sides of the ball. they got to find some way to string something together here, don't they? Yeah, they're down big right now. So as you mentioned, trying to find something to string together, get some consistency, something sustained, maybe calm their whole team down and find a way to get back in this one. Yeah, because right now you're down big, you're being shut out. Let's see if this is the drive that kind of kickstarts them. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. So an instance there of Cam being Cam. We know he can use his legs. And with that big body, it's hard to get him down, even if you get a clear shot on him. Plus, he moves it a lot faster than what people think. And boy, does he have fun playing the game of football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Newton now to throw. Curtis Samuel, the intended target. But it's going to be second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Push him back. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. To throw on third down. Newton gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. 
And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Michael Pilardi now. He's been terrific so far. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Let's go, baby. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He's enjoying a great deal of success. His team is also enjoying a great deal of success. Yeah, he's getting that nice little, what I call the QB lean going right now. You see that little stroll that Some he's got swagger. going? Yeah, he's definitely got that. You see him throwing the football, the nice little video. He's seeing that in his head as well because he wants more of that to happen. So anytime you see him that relaxed, that comfortable, usually it's a big thumbs up for his team. Yeah, it's been a big highlight day for him. They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. And this one will be taken up. They'll spot it right at the seven. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Four receivers now, three to the right, one to the left. Second down and four. Second and four. That's complete to his receiver, Gadwin. Down the numbers, there he goes. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Chris Gadwin, 93 yards as his guys continue to pour it on. So whatever happened to rookie quarterbacks taking time to adjust to life in the NFL because this guy looks like he's been doing it for about, what, seven years? Four touchdown passes? That's not something rookies are supposed to be doing with the ease in which he's doing it. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. And the lead will grow by one more. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Going quickly out wide to Moore. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, 
He ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They obviously watched the tape a few times and made some adjustments. Here's Michael Pilardi now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the seven yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And another drive starts with them huddling in their end zone, Charlie. Where have we seen this before? Very recently, but the last time they had it backed up like this, they took it the length of the field. Hard to do that once, let alone the idea of doing it twice. But of course, that's the goal. So as a secondary deal, get two first downs. Help yourself with field position and help your defense out. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Everyone dialed in. Throwing on first down, Daniels. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. James Bradbury, he was right there to break it up. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Second and 10. His throw incomplete. James Bradbury, he was right there to break it up. So now third and 10, they had the big play to start the drive, but two incompletion sets. Looking to throw, Daniels, and that's complete. It's Watson, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. This quarterback now six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. Back to throw. Daniels. And Watson has it right side. 17 yards on the play and a Buccaneer first down. And now he's closing in on 450 yards passing. That's an incredible number. I mean, you're talking about the best defenders in the world that you're trying to throw the ball against, and you're creating that type of a number. Fantastic job, fantastic performance, and he's going to have to ice up his arm afterwards, too. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Looking to throw. Daniels over the middle. He finds Godwin complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. Uh, he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again, he picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him, double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. On first down, Daniels. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. That is caught at the seven. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Justin Watson. His third touchdown now on the year as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Brandon, remind me again, this is a rookie quarterback we're seeing? A rookie indeed. I mean, because my eyes are telling me something I'm having trouble believing. Five touchdown passes. He's thrown five in this game. Are you kidding me? Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that will extend this big lead. 
So that drive in total eight plays. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucks. And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Newton. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. The Panthers on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and seven. Throwing is Newton. It's hauled in by Torrey Smith. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. With this lead and the football, things obviously looking good, but maybe, you know, you've taught me this before, maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them, protect them, take care of the ball, move it downfield, run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game, reward them. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Back to throw. Daniels. That'll be caught by Jordan Leggett, his tight end. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A well-executed 22-yard game. Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. That's all they care about right now. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw. Daniels. That's into the hands of the tight end, Leggett. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. They have the nice cushion. <laughs> they just want to pour it on right now, still throwing the football. And I know my background says, why do you need to do this? Just go ahead and run out the clock and get a win. But as many people pointed out to me, it's a video game, man. <laughs> Go ahead and put the numbers up. Sportsmanship, not an issue. Exercise those fingers. Let's go now. 15 line. 15 line. I don't even know why this team showed up. <laughs> Barber on first and 10. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And Owen will be intercepted. Dante Jackson picks it. The 
those INTs all sting when you throw one in the red zone. I think especially as a rookie, maybe it stings a little bit more. I think what you're saying is they don't all count the same, do they? Mm -hmm. Right? Interceptions in the red zone that you've given up points now, those are precious. So you have to learn from those and in a hurry. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. So Newton and the Panthers come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Newton, meanwhile, here connecting with McCaffrey. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. Here's a second and five now from the 25. To throw is Newton. He's got Smith here. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Newton now, a perfect 8-for-8 eight eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. Here's Newton. That's Samuel caught left side. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Offense for them has been at a premium. You wonder where plays like that have been all game long. They're thinking the exact same thing themselves, but they're also looking forward now because now these plays are really for next week, trying to get some momentum going. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Again, Newton. Open man is Samuel, complete. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Not today, you are. Not today. To the air again, Newton. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score. Throwing again is Newton. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Well, partner, I think it's safe to say they can mark this down as extremely frustrating. Here we are in the fourth quarter, and that last play, that turnover, I think it epitomizes what happened to them all the day on offense. So symbolic, and that's why they're still being shut out. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Ready, ready. 60 or. Tighten up, tighten up. Together. Following the fumble recovery, Daniels. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone could stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now because they see them coming and think, we've got no shot to beat this team. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Oh, 
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. <laughs> don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going forward. Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling. No, you don't want that feeling again. And who knows? You may meet up with this team again. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. That first yeah, down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Draw play as Newton gives to McCaffrey. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. Well, here go, here go. They pick up another first down with that run. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw, Newton. Complete, Smith has it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 11 yards and a Panther first down. Now a first down throw for Newton. And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. The intended receiver there, Ian Thomas. And that'll bring up second down. On second and 10, Newton. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. The former Bill, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. Newton throwing again. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on to punt for Carolina. This is away and a very good kick, angled for the sidelines. Out of bounds and close. The question, was it a touchback? No, they'll say it crossed out at the two-yard line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say cheerio from London.